Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marina and this is my weekly what's for dinner. If you don't know what a what's for dinner is, it's where I show y'all two to three to four to who knows how many. Usually it's two, but this week it's three. I show y'all three meals that my family and I really enjoyed this week. They're usually, I uh, so about said a boatload. I didn't say, I about said a boatload, but I don't think that's appropriate. It's usually a boatload of carbs involved because my family's fit my husband is super fit and i'm the only morbidly obese one in this house which sucks on me but it's okay I, I modify my meals as much as i can and honestly i eat carbs i haven't been really good on my weight loss though and i haven't updated y'all because i got some i'll do a video on it soon anyways on to the blackened chicken parmesan pasta this stuff if you have never tried anything that i have told you to try i urge you to try this this was the best, one of the best meals I have ever made. I, I really stand by that. And Shane agrees. He was like, holy moly, like this needs to be a weekly staple in our house. You just take three chicken breasts, you get all that fat off there, and then you gracefully, as I'm doing here, <laughs> split them in the middle. <laughs> um, then you're going to take some butter and you're, gonna, you're supposed to melt it. I softened it. It's, it's okay. It worked. You're going to take some butter, melt it, soften it, whatever, grind your ganders, whatever that means, and you're going to paint it onto the chicken. Once you painted the butter onto the chicken, then you're going to put this Zatarain's blackened, Zatarain's, Zatarain's blackened seasoning on each side of the chicken. Now, blackening chicken is fun, but don't do it if you have asthma or something like that because I did not know going into it that when you blacken chicken, things are supposed to smoke. It's supposed to smoke up. You're supposed to raise your windows. Everything smokes when I cook anyway, so I didn't know there was a difference. Well, I knew there was a difference when the smoke became black. Because usually smoke in my house when I cook, every weekday I cook, it's gray. This smoke was black, hence the name blackening chicken. So, if you're going to do this, just want to warn you, definitely raise your windows, get a fan going. Because apparently it's a thing, I didn't know it was a thing until I googled it. Why is my house filled with black smoke and while I'm blackening chicken? And then, duh, Marina, it came up when you blacken chicken there's gonna be black a lot of black smoke <laughs> so just know that going into this thing you're gonna put this in the pan and you're gonna cook them on each side until they're blackened now i didn't want too too blackened chicken so i really got a browned chicken because i wanted mine brown why are you pretending to be british for the yeah shane just get your phone in my shot <laughs> show me tiktoks while i'm trying to show you a shallot You just need one little shallot. <laughs> That's offensive. <laughs> hey, I shrunk the shallot. <laughs> lying. <laughs> that was lying, Marina. You should be ashamed. Oh, crack it up. Honey, I shrunk the shallot. You should be ashamed. Ew. I've never had a shallot before, have you? What do you do? Peel it like an onion? Oh, no. I don't know. Uh, if I cut any more of the shallot off, there's not gonna be a shallot. Oh, daggone. But my eyes is watering. Suckers, be little but fierce. So little you could go. Oh, it's minced. Blindly go around, chopping it. I'd never in my life heard of a shallot. I thought it was when I first read it. Like I thought, you know, here in Tennessee, especially in the Smoky Mountains, we have things called sh shallots. Well, they're actually I think they're called chalets, but I've always just called them shallots. So when I saw shallot, I was like, wait, I know what a shallot is. Like that's a cabin. It's not. It's a mi it's a mini onion. So if I'd have thought, I would have done a magic trick for y'all and put the onion there and then put the shallot and you know, but I didn't. I wasn't that invested. I just wanted to get the shallot minced. Um, also, just in case you're new and you're not used to watching me cook, I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. So I I 
meant things weird. I just literally blindly chop around. I'm blind in my left eye, so I can say that. Okay, so what I did wrong when I covered that and I cooked it, you're also going to take, wow, I'm everywhere. You're going to take a fourth a cup of your pasta because you're going to have pasta cooking. I didn't tell you all that, but you are. You're going to have pasta cooking while you're cooking your chicken. And when it's cooked, you're going to take a fourth a cup of that pasta juice water stuff and keep it on the side until we get past this part I'm talking about now. So all these recipes are gonna be linked down below if you want clear instructions. So what I did wrong is I covered this up and it caused juice to form, right? And it wasn't smoking up like it should because it was covered. So you have to make sure it's uncovered. The website says to cook it for like three to five minutes on each side. I don't know, I'm paranoid about E. coli and I don't know if chicken can give you E. coli, but I'm pretty sure chicken can, uncooked chicken can give you worms and I ain't about worms. I had worms when I was like six and that was not a fun experience. I don't want to re I don't want to redo that. So I cooked mine for like seven to eight minutes on each side. Super cooked. It's kind of dry, but I kind of like mine that way. So you know, just use your you should use your meat thermometer. Um, but they said three to five minutes. I don't know how you can cook chicken for three minutes and it be cooked, but apparently you can. So you're gonna do that and see how you there's like brown. I'm pointing at my screen right now like you're sitting beside me, <laughs> but you see how there's like some brown there on that chicken on the far right, like bottom right that's the blackness that i like i don't like super blackened chicken because like my teeth are bad and it's really hard to chew so i just like darkened uh browned chicken so you're going to remove your chicken and then what you're going to do is you're going to put six tablespoons of butter in your pan and melt that down and once you get it melted down and you know stirred around flipped around with your little wooden spoon you're going to add the minced shallots i almost said chalets why do i want to call them cabins and the cabins onions i don't understand i also need to google what a shallot is do they grow like onions are they mini onions on purpose or is it by accident hmm and you're gonna cook you're just gonna cook those until they cook down while i cook that i put my breadsticks in the oven and then cook it till it cooks down and then hold on oh yeah oh then we're gonna do uh, okay i had to pause and and look it up because I forgot. You're going to put one cup of heavy whipping cream in there. And you're going to cook this sucker until it looks mutated. It's going to look like it's not supposed to be doing what it's doing. But it is supposed to be doing that. So don't worry. It's going to look like this. You want it to get super bubbly. Because that's how it kind of, I don't know, is curates the right word. Am I turning into a scientist right now? It's going to need a kick like that a few minutes on high. So you have time to scroll your phone. To get your breadsticks out. All that stuff. Once it's about the consistency you see here. You're going to add your noodle water <laughs> your noodle water and a cup of grated parmesan cheese you're gonna stir that in and you're gonna cook it until it kind of simmers ish it's gonna it's gonna look you know it's gonna simmer and boil a little bit you just really want it to thicken up so it's a consistency of salt and not salt not the consistency of salt you don't want that that's what i'm about to put in here <laughs> the consistency of sauce and not water you're going to put a little bit of salt a little bit of pe pepper just to taste stir it around and let it cook down for a few minutes gracefully add your noodles as you see me doing here look how messy my stove is like my stove is so messy you're just gonna plop your noodles into the sauce and just toss them around in it it's gonna look like there's not gonna be enough sauce for 16 ounces of noodles but there is it's part it's the perfect amount trust me you're gonna toss them around in there and get them coated real good um they they said you wanted your noodles al dente i don't know what that means um al dente it makes me think they wanted them dense. I don't know. I just cooked my noodles like I cooked my noodles for spaghetti. And it worked. Then you're going to take your chicken, slice it. Mine, mine was kind of, it was semi-warm. You might want to warm it up. I don't know. It depends on how long it takes you to fiddle for it around with your sauce and your noodles. Mine was okay, though. It was a good temperature. Um, and then you're just going to top it and voila. Give it with the, give it out. <laughs> give it, give it with the breadstick. And it is super good. This stuff, we're going to have this weekly, guarantee it. It is delicious. You'll love it. You will not regret it. The next meal I made is this easy peasy barbecue chicken sandwiches. I did, I made this recipe kind of by myself. I took somebody else's barbecue uh, recipe. They had it for like a barbecue chicken in the crock pot recipe that we've eaten before and we really like, but I was not feeling the crock pot. I was not feeling clean that out, so I didn't do it. I just used the pre-packaged grilled chicken. It takes one cup, one and a half cups. Am I going for another one? Nope. Okay. It takes one and a half cups of the Italian seasoning from Olive Garden, that little fancy one, a bunch of splashes of Worcestershire sauce. 
um, some, a whole thing of baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Look, did you see that just now? I accidentally plopped the lid off into my sauce and I did not even know it. How did I not know that? I didn't even pick it up while I was like pouring this into there. It just starts flooding out and I thought, oh, cool. Like, you know, I, I this is a hack. Like you're supposed to squeeze it from the very top and, and it all comes out fast. No, I squeeze it from the very top and it exploded and my lid went in there. You're gonna take a fourth a cup of brown sugar and you are going to whisk this thing whisk it whisk it good and then i find finally i find the lid to my barbecue sauce i'm like oh what is this I, at first i thought it was the brown sugar like forming into a hard ball it wasn't it was my lid there it is and we don't tell shane about that and we just go on with our day once the chicken is cooked which this is the already pre-cooked frozen chicken it doesn't take long to cook at all oh, we love this chicken we use it on sandwiches with mustard we use it in fajitas we use it in our barbecue chicken wraps we use this chicken in everything we love it and it goes a little bit like a little bag goes a long way so we coat our chicken in our barbecue sauce and then we just stir it up and we cook it for about five more minutes five six more minutes just enough to really heat the sauce and, and you know heat it together so it all comes together and this is shane's plate i cannot eat two of those but shane can he ate three i think he loved these these were a hit this is the first time i ever made it with that kind of chicken he loved it the next recipe is hamburger beef lo mein now i have tried the beef and broccoli lo mein i have tried the beef lo mein i have all those recipes on my channel i have a whole what's for dinner playlist never tried it this way though and i loved it you just grind up some hamburger meat add you some soy sauce the direct measurements for this will be in the description box below i will be sure to have those in the description box below because i played a little bit with these measurements um just to match our needs but you add some of that you add some um uh, minced garlic i added i think a little bit more minced garlic than what they said but i like garlic a lot you add some salt in there I think I added a teaspoon. I think I added a teaspoon. And then uh, just a little bit of sugar. I think I added half a tea, yeah, half a teaspoon of sugar. You're gonna mix that all together, ground it up with your meat masher, whatever you use to meat to smash your meat. <laughs> whatever you use to smash your meat. Then you're gonna you're gonna um uh you're gonna take you're gonna cut up some um oh snap, what is this? I don't eat it enough to know where it is. It is a celery stalk. You're going to cut up a celery stalk and get it cut real good. You're going to chop that sucker up good. Like, you're going to just blindly chop like that. Any way you got to get it cut, just cut it. Um, I think I minced it a little bit too here in a minute. I don't know. I was in a mincing mood. So, you're going to cut that up, just one stalk. And push it over to the side. You're going to take a fourth a cup and you're gonna put shredded carrots into it. Now, the recipe said, I think they said to, to mince your carrots as well, like cut up your carrots as well, but I like shredded carrots in my beef lo mein. I love shredded carrots. So I just used shredded carrots and it was super good. You're gonna take a half an onion and you're gonna chop that up really good. I didn't really mince the onion as much as I should have probably. I was over minting, like I was all about mincing for a minute and then I was quick, as quickly as I, I was all about it, I was over it. So I just chopped it up and did the bare minimum once your hamburger is browned you're going to add in all your vegetables so you're going to add in your carrots you're going to add in your onions and you're going to add in your celery all at once you're going to cook it until your celery becomes like a bright green. It's gonna be super green, almost like a lime green. That means it's cooked, I guess. I don't know, that's what the website told me. I didn't know that until now. While it's cooking, you're gonna get on your sauce. And your sauce is the stuff that is going to make this recipe. I took a fourth a cup of um, brown sugar, a fourth a cup of soy sauce that's a lot of soy sauce i know but that's what the recipe said and the sauce turned out like any other lo mein sauce i've ever tried i was originally going to do a rice wine a sauce but you can't find rice wine anywhere um then i take this hoisin sauce now this hoisin sauce is an enemy of mine because in one of my very first what's for dinners we had covid and i could not taste or smell anything but buddy let me tell you something <laughs> 
<laughs> I could smell this stuff. It opened me up like that. And that, I mean, it's that's how strong it is. I called it poison sauce at that point because it was like poison. It really was. Then you're going to take some sesame seed oil. Like I said, the direct measurements will be down in the description box below. You're going to take some ginger and you're going to take some sesame seeds and you're going to take some crushed red pepper flakes. Um, I think I used a half a teaspoon on all three of those spices. A half, or well, actually, sesame seeds went a little over because it they all just kind of fell out. And I just put the more sesame seeds, the the better, right? So I didn't really worry with it. Um, and I just put those in there and I stirred it up real good. This sauce does not look like it would coat all the 16 ounce noodles that I used, but let me tell you, it does. You do not want to double that, that sauce recipe or nothing because honestly, that sauce is very potent. Like it's strong, not in a bad way, um, but it just, it's not the kind of sauce like spaghetti sauce that you need to see on the noodles to know it's there. Like just, just know, <laughs> just know that it's there and it's potent, it's strong. It's, you know, it's got that, it's got that Chinese um, flavor that you get in like Chinese restaurants and Chinese buffets and stuff like that. It's super good though. Um, it, you know, if you don't like Chinese, if you don't like stuff like that, like Chinese food, then I, this definitely ain't the recipe for you. Um, but honestly, I used to dislike Chinese food so much. Like I couldn't even go to eat a buffet or nothing. But here recently, I found that there are actually some things in, in like a Chinese buffet that I'll actually eat. So this is one of them. Like lo mein is one of them. I'm a fan of rice too, but the I'm a fan with the, of this with rice. I have I don't know about the hamburger meat part, but the beef part I'm a fan of it with rice. Um, but I like this with noodles. It's super good. So anyways, I hope you guys have a blessed morning, evening, night, whatever it is, wherever you are at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you more. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me and being here. Those of you that watch these videos, these What's for Dinner videos, it means the world to me. Because I know that they don't do as well as the other videos. Um, and so the fact that you still show up and show out on this video, it means the world to me. So I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.